Welcome to Smutty Scriptures, the podcast where three best friends gather together to explore the holy text of fantasy romance novels. I'm Head Priest Blue Cromwell, and I am joined by my sisters in sin, Cuttlefish and Purple Space Cat, to tell you all about our thoughts on this episode's sacred text. Ironically enough, we are reading a book called Priest by Sierra <laughs> Simone, and we have a lot of thoughts. We read the entire thing. Most of us. I mean, all of well, us. <laughs> I would hope all of us. Blue's the only priest for me. <laughs> Thank you. I can be on Reddit all of you want. I have a lot of thoughts on Priest. Mm. I have discovered something deep about myself, actually, through reading this. Oh, God. <laughs> no, okay, no. I thought it was only fair, because a lot of times on the podcast, I always say something along the lines of, well, you know why you like enemies to lovers, right? It's because the, the, the. I always fucking do that to you guys. And I'm always like, oh, it's because, you know, they have to see the worst parts of you and choose to love you so you feel safe. Like, I always read y'all to filth, and I think it's only fair that I read myself to filth today, because I had to do a little bit of soul searching, because I was like, why is this not connecting with me? Like, honestly, I did like a lot of the smut, as per usual. I think the smut's usually not the problem. Sometimes it's just always, sometimes like the story around it or some of the themes or whatnot. And I think I was with from Blood and Ash, because they had also like a forbidden kind of romance thing i think i fucked with that on the basis that it was like purity culture sucks like it wasn't like an actual well it was forbidden but it was also just really based on you've been lied to your whole life that's why this like is forbidden. perceived yeah and it was also like a kind of a feminist thing of like you can use your body however the fuck you want queen like you don't have to like it was i liked it so it became something that honestly gave her strength as a character, I felt like, for her to explore that side of herself in From Blood and Ash. Ironically, also named Poppy, like the girl in this book. Two very different people, though. I um, did not make that connection. Yeah. I did, because I, I, I could hear in my head Cuddle being like, not a fan of the name from, from Blood and Ash. <laughs> and I know you fucking didn't like it here, too. I don't like it. I don't know why I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's a lot. But I, I just called her Lady. Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> good enough it was just it was so just you could have called her lots of things yeah. it's just doing it lady did. Did it. <laughs> yeah lady's pretty good actually but yeah i realized i think i was kind of in that mix because in my head i was like maybe i do like forbidden romance maybe i do or even from blood and ash i did re-listen to our episode for our season one and mm -hmm. i noticed i was like oh well usually in vampire stories it's like forbidden because one is human and one is not a human and that's more like the semblance that they have right and with this story i actually think because we have also said some of my favorite tropes are like arranged marriage or like marriage of convenience or something kind of along those lines and right. i think for me my damage is that i can't imagine someone falling in love with me unless they're physically forced to spend a significant amount of time with mm. me and then you thus say we'll see my charm but they would ha they're gonna hate me at first and it's not gonna be for right. love but they will be beaten down by me personality wise for Oh yeah. <laughs> to get to that point. You know what I mean? So yeah, for Ben, I, I, I was like, I'd not realistic <laughs> not realistic. What do you mean? No. <laughs> you would go to hell for me? No, I don't really think so. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. I do kind of wonder though, Blue, how do you feel about you know, like three months? Is that long enough to be to get in like super close forced proximity for somebody to fall in love three months is that enough time depends on the people i suppose i mean what if for it's me, like an, an, what if it's like an environmental problem instead of like a like a lawful unity or something like that like they're they're like i don't know maybe stuck in the side one house no i don't think because that's of me. I, I mean, I'm not against reasons. it in, in, like, concept, but it's more, it's more for me, like, the moment of, like, in a marriage of convenience where, like, someone, I don't know, says something rude to, like, one of the people or, like, tries to hurt one of the people, and then the other person's like, you know, don't touch my wife or don't touch my husband. Like, that, like, possessiveness, I think, is interesting because there is, like, a right to the other person, but not, especially in those marriage of conveniences type situation. Like the whole and the whole like having to keep up an image of being a certain way. So even though y'all do not love each other at the beginning of that story, you do have to keep up appearances. So it's like you are kind of forced to have that kind of connection. So you like Bridgerton? I've never seen it. Mm. 
but I it's mean, that. if it's like that, probably. Yeah. You know, they do have Bridgerton books. So, I mean, it's a thing. But yeah, so that was something. I was like, <laughs> it's only fair for me to read myself to filth because I do it to you guys all the time. So, so do you feel filthy? I wish I did. Mm. I wish mm. I did. There's just you know something about a, a, a white man Redditor that just doesn't do it for <laughs> me. With all this religious trauma, I'm like, okay, go off, King, I guess. Do you know who should feel th- filthy? Literally anybody who touches the floor of the church. Because <laughs> do you have any idea how often they wash those rugs? You Fucking never. <laughs> in, in, in the book, so I would assume never. Yeah, no. Purple, do you have any other additional thoughts before? Yeah, like general impression. Someone? Yeah, I I definitely had some feelings about the middle of the book and the end and even some of the beginning <laughs> because wow. that's the just, podcast wow <laughs> drives me so fucking crazy whenever he's like oh but i want this oh but i want that oh no what am i gonna do it's like dude just fucking pick one just pick one and you're, but i can't live without that oh, but i can't live without this and I was literally reading it, saying out loud to the book. Pick one. No, I was like, you don't have to be a fucking priest in order to help people. That is that is stupid. You don't have to be a priest to help people. There are so many yeah. things that you could do. So many. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be Catholicism. It doesn't fuck it. See, Just, that's what I was thinking, because I don't know about you guys. I did grow up in a, I'm not Lutheran anymore, but I grew up in a Lutheran household. I'm more of an Irish folk practitioner these days, but that's neither here nor there. But I grew up in a Lutheran church and, you know, went multiple times a week, like that whole shebang. So the idea of like this level of romantic tension and... I guess just tension in general with his faith not really aligning with what he wants to do. Like, I grew up in a church that a priest was married. Like, they're married and they have children. Like, Lutherans didn't really have any qualms, it seemed. So, yeah, I just didn't grow up in that kind of okay. environment. So, it just seemed like, why not just, you could still be a priest, just go be a Lutheran or a Protestant or just someone that lets you get married and have that like you but just there are also your catholic <laughs> there are also catholic priests that are married though yeah and and realistically lutheranism is a response to catholicism there're very few differences between the two realistically i understand why it was such a big deal but like i don't i don't get it outside of a book if it's real life that's fucking stupid like mm. you are just being intentionally obtuse and i hate it this is not a real problem. You are making this a problem. So that was frustrating. I also hated the ending. Sure. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think I don't think any of us were no. really very into the ending. No. I hated it so much because he's all like, oh my God. And she's all like, oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then they just have sex right there. In the middle of the fucking church while service is going on, broad daylight, doors open, and they're like, and we don't even care. And I'm like, that's a crime. (laughs) The police officer arresting you, Michael. The police are on their way, buddy. (laughs) And now you're back in the news. Great job. Dude. I just hated how there were, like, no consequences the whole book. Like, the whole time he's like, this could ruin my entire, like, city's faith in me because I had this one specific mission of not being a priest who like takes advantage of people or well maybe children necessarily but definitely people and it's like really rebuilding faith in that and like common human decency and his biggest concern he's like all these people are gonna lose faith like how do i affect that like it's gonna be a big deal when i do and then when it is revealed that he's been fucking her the whole time everyone's like oh it's okay do you want to you want to still be priest here and it's like so there were no consequences in the fucking first place like i (laughs) i part of the reason i don't think i like the forbidden part in this book is I didn't want him to do it. I was like, no, that's objectively the bad choice. And like everything you're saying is reasons why you should not go do that. Makes sense. From Blood and Ash doesn't. It. it was like cultural and societal bullshit. 
this one i'm like right. oh you you would actually be probably affecting a lot of people mentally and they're like it's like enough to like do some damage especially with like your specific mission no i i have to disagree with you a little bit there because the whole reason why he's trying to repair this with the community was because some dude diddled kids and he ain't doing nothing with kids so i don't see why it would fucking matter he's a grown-ass man who's you know all super interested in a consenting enthusiastically might i say grown-ass woman like they are grown-ass people that can make grown-ass decisions like it's fine leave him the fuck alone yeah, I mean, there's nothing to do with kids. All of your whole thing that you're trying to fix has got to do with kids. So whenever everybody at the end was just like, yeah, we don't care. I was like, that tracks because this whole thing didn't fucking matter. And it was a non problem. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I feel like some people would still see that type of person, especially for someone trying to find their faith, that it's an yeah, equal power dynamic between the two. And that is where the problem also comes in. Not that she's an adult, though that does make it obviously better and not a crime. But I do think that that is an important factor to think of when you're when you're talking about these two and, and why they think the perception would be that, you know. All right. Listen, I am apparently the third spoke in this <laughs> wheel because I don't agree with either one of you. OK. Oh, God. I, I'm here for it. We're drinking wine. We're talking shit. Let's I, go. I, I guess that when I started this book, I was just thirsty as fuck because I did not give a shit about any of the consequences this town. <laughs> at any point in time. And in fact, I was like, yes, do it. Fuck her. <laughs> I would fuck everything. Just <laughs> end it all. Blow it up. Like, mm -hmm. I was very much leave the church screw the people yeah i didn't give a flying fuck and i thought that the beginning was really hot like i love they actually did the deed and they were just doing other things kind of thing yeah, yeah i loved i loved all of that i love the fact that she was in there diddling herself in the fucking booth and oh god a crime <laughs> It, it probably, <laughs> but it was, I, I didn't care yeah. <laughs> because my actual brain wasn't the one in the driver's seat and sure. she <laughs> liked it. So. I mean, fair enough. I think that's something to be said. I mean, I like, again, I like smut. I like, like, uh, there were a lot of scenes in this that I thought were hot. I was yeah. just like, I don't feel like you're making the wrong or the right choice here. I don't feel like you're making the right choice. I do not think we should be doing can, this. But can I talk was about stupid about that a choice had to be fucking made. Sure. I didn't give a shit about any choice. I just wanted them <laughs> to stop talking. <laughs> You're like, oh my God, all this fucking tension. <laughs> just do it. Yeah, that's basically what I wanted. So, like, when she showed up at his house in the rain, I was like kicking my feet when I was reading. <laughs> so excited. I did not have any feet kicking in this entire was, book. Listen, I, I really love forbidden romance stuff. Yeah. I, when they're not supposed to do it, I want them to do everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want them to be secret. I want there to be high stakes, but I want them to say, damn the consequences. And all I want to do is bone. And I'm just, I'm like, yes, please, please oh, don't stop. Yeah. And I respect that. I do. The teenage girl in me is like, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. You can't be here right now. Stop. Oh my God. Nobody's gonna see <laughs> you sneaking I him in through the window. Right over there. Yeah. <laughs> you would think that I was a really bad teen, but I was not. But yeah, that's like all of my wildest fantasies come true. Not really, because I never wanted to fuck a priest, but I digress. Listen, do we talk about the individual scenes though? We can definitely go Which to one was your even favorite? favorites. Yeah. Well, okay. One <laughs> would be my favorite, but there was something in them that turned me off completely. You know, I've talked about some podcasts before. I'm not necessarily a praise kink type of guy. I like a little degradation. I like a, be mean to me right. a little bit, like, you know, and then be nice to me after. But you had to be mean to me <laughs> during the act. <laughs> so I really enjoyed a lot of the scenes and a lot of his like power dynamic with her, which is a little problematic, again, considering his place in society. But that's and her faith. But that's that's different. But just like the general 
it was like, okay, we have some fun BDSM. We have fun moments. There was something he thought about that I was like, that'd be really hot, but they didn't do. It was, he talked about like wanting to have her crawl on the ground to him with yeah, a, a glass crawling. bottle on her, a glass of uh, Scott crawling. on her back. Oh my God. I was like, that's the hottest thing I've ever fucking heard. And then they didn't do it. So I was like, okay, well, not that specific, but anyway. The thing I hated the most, I was really fucking into the strip club scene. Yeah, I was into that too. I was like, yes, like we're setting the scene. Like maybe I'm also like a little bit more like I did strip for a little while. So I'm like a little bit like, ooh, okay, the atmosphere of a strip club, very believable, very sexy, very lines crossed, like cool, sounds cool. And then she had to give him money to pay her. And I was embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. I was like, Girl, I get that, like, she's like, oh, my God, I'm, like, replacing all those memories that you know, I have with someone else, like, at this location, like, because it'll make you happy as you're possessive. Well, and also well, like, take your priest to work day. Honestly. And then give him money to pay her? Uh, like, yeah, because he ain't making no dough. Also, how does it work? Because, like, they have cameras in all of those private rooms because you're not supposed to be prostituting yourself because that's illegal. But clearly she just said, I'm going to do it. One thing about me, I'm going to go crazy, which like go off, I guess. But a classy strip club, they do not want that fucking reputation. There are people who are going to do it, but it's usually outside of the club. So I was like, damn, you're really just fucking him right here. Okay. I was like, go off, I don't know. queen. I feel like that's probably part of the book, book universe. Yeah. Probably goes along with why it was such a big fucking deal that they were fucking in the first fucking place. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're so right. So it's a book universe thing. <laughs> It just because it just, nowadays, oh no, a priest is having a consensual relationship. Oh, mm-hmm. damn. So, yeah, one more time. Anyways, I'm going to be the third spoke in the wheel <laughs> and disagree. <laughs> I did not enjoy that scene. Wait, not at all? Wait, why? It's not, not really. Like, no. Was it he, because she had to give him money? No, I was I like just that like, she gave him, I gave him money, though. It kind of set it up to be like a like a game. I was like, that, that ain't okay, monopoly money. <laughs> That's real money. Does it matter? I don't know. That was a turn off for me. I just was like, mm. that made me feel more comfortable with it. I That's just fair. maybe thought it was like beyond the reach of where I wanted the boundaries to go. Maybe like it was too okay, too forbidden. Yeah. Too no, forbidden. it wasn't that. <laughs> no. <laughs> No such thing to cuddle. <laughs> there is a, no. There is a line. <laughs> no, I I don't think it was maybe dirty enough because you it wanted was a it to be like a nice club. Okay, you were like, okay, I needed to be a fucking like yeah, back like alley, I needed it like, to be place. more forbidden. <laughs> you want it to be like a seedy place, um, not like a nice one. Yeah, one could spill their seeds, so to speak. Right, I wanted it to be dirty and. Because I don't, I don't know why, but when I'm reading those things, it that to me is just like I wanted it so bad we had to take what was the, what was there, you know, like in not like Adeline, we, where it's like we can't even make hepatitis. It back in the house. Yeah, kind of like that. Wanted it so bad, had to take what was there. Hepatitis. No. No. Cocaine. No. Heroin. No. Hepatitis. No. Ecstasy. No, but it seemed too planned out, and it you know that kind of ruined the the fun for me but i think my favorite it it's a weird one but i really liked when they were when she to his house in the rain the first time just from start to finish i just loved it yeah. i recognize that just the tip is a meme but in this case <laughs> it's it's also lifestyle. reality it's just I, a little sin i loved i loved that so much yeah, and he was like, "It's just a little bit, it's fine." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, sure." It was, right. it's, <laughs> yeah, it's very teenager, and I think that's probably, oh, maybe, yeah. yeah. I but I kind of like my Not only that problem. I wanted them to be teens, yeah, of course. No, oh. it was hot. It was a hot scene, but the minute he, okay, again, I'm a hater for real. But she's like wearing her little Walking Dead t-shirt, of course. Okay, go off, whatever. They love the Walking Dead. They love Reddit, whatever. They can be happy on Reddit together. But he like sucked her nipples through her t-shirt. And I was like, yeah, uh, was I was like, fucking uh, uh, no. like the, uh, uh, I could gag the texture. <laughs> like I imagining that. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. So here's, no, here's how I, I had to read the book. That. Okay. Yeah. I had to read it and then I would read something that gave me the ick and I was like, that didn't happen. It didn't right, say that. Right, Just right, skip right. now. <laughs> Next um, one. <laughs> I was nope, like, you had a high school under her shirt. Through her shirt? Yeah. Buddy. No. I, I can't. I'm sorry. I'd be pissed. <laughs> I'd be looking down like, huh? <laughs> like well Ma'am, this was gonna be a fun night this was Moving my on. nice walking dead t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> Ew. she's about it but my... yeah and i yeah i i liked that part the best i think because it was again it was just spur of the moment overtaken by passion we're gonna make some really bad decisions and i'm just fucking popcorn <laughs> i love it <laughs> i think that scene is right around the time i messaged you guys because i was like i need a break <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> My favorite part of the book was whenever he like bent her over and made like he was gonna penetrate her from behind, but then didn't, and she got oh, mad yeah. at him. Mm. And I yeah, was just I like, it. that hurts so good, not at all, but like, mm. yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, God, that would break my heart, and I love it. And I was like, that's very loud about me. And, ah, those are feelings I'll we'll have to look at later. Sure. No, yeah, I get it. That That's definitely good. There's a lot of good scenes in here. Like, I like who this character is supposed to be and the dominance and the... I liked his, like, the way that he spoke. The, the author, Sierra Simone, which does not sound like a real name. Sierra does, she writes him so sassy, but like very real. He sounds like, and I don't mean to say this out loud, but like he, he sounds like I sound. Like he talks like I talk. Is I identify with that. I like the part where he <laughs> says in chapter 18, one page 198, he says, she wasn't merely a spreadsheet with spread legs. <laughs> and I just, I actually flagged that because I was like, Purple's going to love that. Yeah, I like spread um, feet. I like spread legs. Let's go. Why go can't on. she be? Let's do it, it. It's the way that he's just like, what am it's I supposed to do with to it? me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's um, make a formula, you and I. Let's I merge these cells. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way that he talks. And because it just sounds very real. It doesn't sound very stuffy to me. It doesn't oh, sound sure. very forced sounds very normal mm -hmm. and uh, sounds like he did a whole lot of time in retail <laughs> no but it's like for example another example yeah like he said at one point or is no it? i'm just, just talking about his uh unending patience hmm. oh well that's the lord that's yeah the lord well, so, and he's got like a customer service voice for that's example voice. on page 15 he says tuesdays Fuck Tuesdays. <laughs> that's all. That's all the time is it. And that, but it's perfect because it, it conveys <laughs> yep. the tone and people actually talk like that. It's not like a full, complete sentence that you would construct for your English 1101 class. Sure. You know, like it was 75 syllables and large ass words. Like it, it didn't need to be that. It was just simple of to the point. Fuck Tuesdays. I was like, yeah, yeah made. Fuck Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I appreciated that. Now, there were some things that he said that I did not like because it gave me the ick many sure. times. Like when he calls for little lamb, I can't, oh. uh, I can't handle it. Did and they I'm ever glad... explain lamb of God? Like that that's where yeah. it came from? Yeah. I don't remember. It didn't help though. <laughs> no. And I just really was glad that she didn't call him daddy or or, or padre <laughs> or something. It, it did Father. make me. It did make me want to go and get some Greek food, though. Okay, well, that's not <laughs> where that was supposed to go. Probably <laughs> fair, fair enough. Yeah, I um, mean, I just got leave me alone. I don't have a specific example of this, but there were a lot of times where he's like. I have to push all my feminist ideas aside when I think about, again, like her crawling on the ground or like doing whatever. I'm like, ah. can the author not have to make a note every time he has like a dominating thought to the woman he's in a relationship with that he's like, I've got to reassure myself of the fact that I view women as people. It's like, King, you shouldn't have to remind yourself. <laughs> like, King. <laughs> Ooh. 
bare minimum. <laughs> I feel like that's the author talking and saying, like, now when I say yeah. this, don't hate the character. We like this character. So just hold on. <laughs> yeah. Is it just like bad thing? But it's fine. <laughs> we could do better. Yeah. <laughs> we could we could have a more simple conversation. Well, and then tell me why we don't even get a fucking conversation of them actually like, I trust you to like know when I say to stop blah, blah 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 this and this and this. That was like 200 and something pages in the book. I marked it in here somewhere. And I was like, we just now got to the point where we're having this conversation. We're like 200 plus. This is like a 300, 400 page book. Not Listen, even, before remember. they were talking through God. Right. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, how did I not know? God was yeah. the guy. But I was like, before. bro, if you okay. had that conversation earlier or if you had, I don't know, something along those lines or I don't know, even just acknowledge that like this is. I don't know. My sexual thoughts are not my everyday thoughts. Like you can prove like that character's a feminist without being like, "Damn, I really want to spank her, but I am an ally." And I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> <laughs> like go off, I guess." Like, can so, I say like, it was hot as hell when she was on the altar? Like maybe not yeah, what okay. they did on the altar, but just the fact she no, was on it. We need to talk about that <laughs> because there was a part. <laughs> Where he said we were just not getting along. <laughs> <laughs> I love he it. He really, he really said, "Where the fuck is that section in the damn book?" Yeah, he I said that all the it, time, and I was just like, "No, no, 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 <laughs> no." Yeah, he said something to the effect of, "How is this not marriage?" And I no. hate that. Oh, here it is, page two thirty two. How is this not marriage? How is this not more binding and more intimate? Us bear with each other in the presence of God. No, 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 no. Ew. I get that you're a priest, but it's fucking weird. It's kind I did of not the enjoy that. The book. Yeah. No. I spanked my <laughs> betrothed. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's weird. Also, I don't known like each other it for two minutes. <laughs> I don't. I did not enjoy that at all. Nope. Nope, that was one of those where I'm just like, oh, skip the paragraph. <laughs> just skip, 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 skip. Mm -hmm. Skip away this. Don't give me sex and God. That's a weird mix. I feel like I need to apologize to someone mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I hate that. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. <laughs> the TikToks are the memes where people are like, when the book talk reader gets to gets to the gates of heaven. And God's sitting there with your TBR what list. About this? Like, what about this? Yeah. I'm going to pull mine out and see priest and be like, listen, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. You'd be like, really? So In my house. In my house. <laughs> I, for the record, I said that they should have cleaned it more. <laughs> I mean, fair. <laughs> yeah. I think it was great until about halfway through. And then I just was like, mm, okay. And then I can it's probably it's probably fine. And then the end of the book, and I was like, "Oh God, no!" And I wanted to throw my book at a wall. I'm sorry that no. I'm the third spoke of the wheel, and it was my pick too. And well, you know what? And that's just what it is. I I would rather us be able to give three different opinions and just be able to like kind of talk it out. Like, there's a good chance that people listening to us have another fourth opinion that we haven't even discovered. That's just like listen. Well, it's a us. many spoke Please tell wheel. Us. Yeah. Go to our Instagram page, go to our Twitter, go somewhere, go to the Twitter, Goodreads. the X, I guess now. Go to Goodreads. The Find us talk. somewhere. Mm -hmm. Maybe Anywhere. not Reddit, though. <laughs> yeah, not Reddit. We're not the on Walking Reddit. Dead Reddit me. <laughs> tell me, tell me what you thought. Tell me I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> we need, we need, we all need allies, you know? <laughs> That'd be so funny if we did like hot takes oh. after each episode on like Goodreads and it was like, who had, who? Who do you agree with? And like, because I, I, I imagine every episode would be so skewed each way. Like, it'd be crazy. <laughs> I feel like I would want to create a name for my, my backer, whatever. The people who are behind me every time. Sure. We can make team names. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. Team well, I names. I want subjects, I think. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I feel like I can have good. disciples. Are you sure you don't want parishioners? <laughs> uh, not after this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like um, you love this purple space cat. I loved the old lady. Millie? I fucking that's who you identify with most, isn't it? You're like, it's I, not a fucking yes. problem. Go fuck each other. I do not Absolutely. care. The church is falling apart. <laughs> please, we need funding. Like, please, dog. 
I thought that it was going to be much more like male version of a god damn it what's that tv show station of a lifetime vi- movie like one of those christmas movies where they're like mm-hmm. i go to the small town and i meet a local person and then we have this thing and we have to help them out and then it's a big deal for the whole town mm-hmm. and we fall in love and then yay and no more big when city for me. opened up <laughs> yes when it opened up, I was like, oh, my God, we got the fucking priestly version of a Lifetime holiday movie. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, all right, well, at least it's not rated G. <laughs> God. No, no, it's not. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it did have good parts. It's rated but... H for holiness. <laughs> There's lots of holes. <laughs> Can we talk oh, God. about There was one thing I marked and I, like... I don't know if I'm interpreting it the right way, so I want to know if you guys are are seeing what I'm seeing. So it's on page 217. This is like a little bit into chapter 20. And I w- this is like the whole, okay, one, no one here, I think, really likes miscommunication tropes and stuff like that. Oh, I don't think, okay, I hate I don't think any of us. There, I feel like there's one out of every 10 times it's actually written well, but most of the time it's kind of lazy to me. Not that this is a necessarily a miscommunication trope, but it just kind of brought back the same feelings because this is where Poppy is talking about how she saw Sterling and she's like, oh, you never have to worry about me cheating on you. It won't happen. I don't cheat, whatever. And then he's like, oh, my God, I'm sorry. I just know you wouldn't do anything to hurt me, but he's more than an ex-boyfriend to you, whatever. My problem was, so it gets to this what? point where she says, it doesn't matter how much history is between Sterling and me. I'll never cheat on you. It's not in my nature. And he mentally replies, I hope that was true. I hoped it so much. But it occurred to me that there was no way I could ever be sure that she wouldn't cheat. There was no warranty for trusting someone you loved and no court where you could sue them if they ended up betraying you. Weird jump. Loving her, trusting or t- <laughs> loving her, choosing to trust her with Sterling, it would make me vulnerable. But she was already vulnerable, loving a man who wasn't actually allowed to love her back. You could cheat on her too. <laughs> like what? Like I'm not saying you should, but you're God. clearly not celibate. Like you're clearly not You've broken your vows. Like, she has no guarantee either that you would not go fuck somebody else. Like, that, it was just weird that he made this comparison here as a character of loving a man who wasn't actually allowed to love her back. I guess it makes us even. No, two people in a relationship are even because they agreed to the boundaries of the relationship. Yeah. And they both could hypothetically cheat. Like, that's. That's why this piece kind of makes it very weird for me because it almost seemed like. The whole Sterling jealousy was kind of pushed. Yes. And it just mm-hmm. didn't really make sense. It didn't and then, either. like, Sterling was an ass, and, like, that was fine. And I don't know. It just I forgot he existed until he showed up in the church. Like, why okay. the hell did she spend the night at his house? Like, that's weird. And, and like, she's that's... so, she's everyone's like, oh my God, Poppy's so smart. She has this college education. She's so intelligent. But she oh my knew God, better. She knows how to use Kickstarter. Like, she knows how to fucking do all these things. She's a fucking genius. And then she's like... It's like she's surrounded by uh, boomers. Literally. And then she's sitting there like, don't worry. Sterling said he was done blackmailing me. Bitch, what the fuck? She said, don't worry. He had I just he don't think paid he a photographer to go follow you around to take these pictures. You think it's over? You're not fucking stupid. You are not that stupid. Poppy's not that stupid. I don't hate her as a character. I thought actually her journey with Faith was interesting as someone who doesn't share this faith, but thought it was interesting. Complicated element adding it to a love story, though, it, but fine. Yeah. Um, but I just, I was like, this girl is not dumb. No part of this has ever told me that she's dumb, and she always stands up for herself. And she has these parts where, like, there was this really cool part in page 95 about chapter 9 that I, like, bookmarked because I was like, oh, that's fun. Like, she goes, you know, this is where he's feeling all terrible because, you know, they've started to kind of have a sexual relationship. And he's like, I took advantage of you. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'm my own person. I'm capable of making my own choices. I'm not damaged. I didn't grow up unloved. I'm not a blank slate for males to exert their agency on. Like, this whole thing. I love that. I was like, boundaries, queen, intelligent. And then she's like, you remember that guy that was blackmailing me a couple days ago? I think it's over. Bitch. I think it's naive. I also I got really it's... drunk and slept over on his couch, but nothing happened. Yeah. Why are you so Why upset? Why you trust me? <laughs> Poppy. <laughs> I could never cheat on anybody. Bullshit. Listen, yeah. I'm sorry. I take in reality. Everyone is capable of violence. Everyone is capable of cheating on someone. 
everyone is capable of the most worst, horrible possible things you can think of. It's a scale. It is not an absolute. It is not a checkbox. It is a sliding scale. Mm -hmm. And he's cheating on God to be with her. (laughs) Rude. Rude. (laughs) Honestly. He's already doing it. (laughs) Like, what do you mean? That makes me feel gross. Thank you. (laughs) Listen, it's just, it's just that whole element of just trying to make me feel like Poppy at the end is so dumb. Like, as if she hasn't, like, and even, even the element to her being naive, like, she has seen the people around her. That's a part of the reason she wanted to leave her kind of upbringing. Of course, I like the pressure and like that kind of stuff. But like, she wasn't that type of person. She's, she's like aware of human nature in that way and knows that it doesn't fit her. And again, she's just very intuitive and she's very emotionally intelligent. And then also just, just, you know, straight up book smart, you know, she's got both, but she is not dumb enough for me to believe Sterling was like, don't worry, babe, it's over. Yeah. And she was like, ha ha, guess I won't worry about it. Especially when she was also written as a character who knew exactly what he was and what he was doing and what he wanted. Right. She knew exactly what what he was. Yeah. And what he was looking for. And he wasn't hiding it. And why go out to dinner? He's married. I get she's like, we spent these years together. It's our final conversation. He is married. You don't need a final conversation. You don't even need to be in the same room, in my personal opinion. Like, whatever. Like, sure, maybe that makes me a little possessive, but I'm like... Has no one met cell phones before? No, I've never (laughs) heard of it. Like, it's just, it just came off very... Because you know he's cheated on his wife with you before. You know what he's going after. At that point, aren't you, like, low-key being super fucking disrespectful to this guy's wife, even though Sterling and her are obviously not in love, and that's the whole point. And she's probably getting some behind his back anyway. But, like, Poppy... Poppy, no. Yeah. Poppy, don't do that. Even Agreed. even if, like, so she, Tyler's sitting there like, oh, my God, you, like, spent the night, you went to dinner, you were in his car, he took this picture of you, you didn't text me back, like, all this shit. Like, can you imagine if that man's husband or man's wife gave a shit about him? Like, 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 it's just, I don't know. I just think Poppy. It's a squirt bottle situation where you just want to be like. Shh. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's being disingenuous to herself because she's like, I'm a monogamous person. I don't cheat. I don't do this. I'm sorry, I don't really believe that person who's so, I have the monogamous gene or whatever the fuck they said. I mean, I know she, Tyler kind of brought up that uh, conversation and she was like, oh, I guess I have it too. You don't if you're willing to go out on a like dinner date with a married man. I'm sorry. I've had enough. Like, I don't believe you. I just don't. I just don't. Yeah. Agreed. Maybe I'm going too hard, but I'm just like, Poppy, no. you are not this dumb. You are not. I, we all deserve better. Okay. And can we say just for a second, the whole Poppy's like, I'm just going to make the decision for him. Right. Uh, what the fuck? Literally, what if is that she had doing? been, if that had been turned around the other way, she would have been livid. But yeah. she's okay with making that decision for him. That's fucked up. Yeah. That was stupid. I was so pissed. Yeah. I hate when characters do that and make decisions for each other like that, especially serious shit. Like we, we talked about with like, yeah, we do that in real life though. <laughs> to that level. Yeah. Sometimes. And then he had to up and pack <laughs> away and move to fucking Africa. <laughs> Dog. He was all right. Through. I feel, I feel and they gave us nothing of that story. He was just like, yeah, hung out with some kids and I did this and blah, blah, blah. And now I'm home again. I'm going to school. I'm like, okay, what the fuck? I, I have don't a get beard. the most interesting part. I just get that you're back now. Like, fuck. Okay. I guess. I was kind of happy I didn't have to sit through. It was really hot. and We sweated a lot. <laughs> I almost wanted him to find someone else and start a new life at that point and just like live a beautiful life traveling and helping people. I wanted the book to end to too much. They, as he was walking up to propose. That's when the book should have ended. Also, a proposal after that length of time of not speaking is also kind of crazy. Like the whole thing is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. That's the whole point. But hands down, the absolute worst part, the least favorite part of the whole book was whenever they had sex in public, the, the very end. Yeah. Yeah. In front I was of people. So, like, girl. This is a crime. <laughs> Dude, they're going to have square ball shh, go to go you're going to prison <laughs> just stop yeah like okay you've decided to be together that's fine we do not and now need to bang you're in the middle both of sex church. offenders <laughs> <laughs> like bro you're gonna and have to you're leave back the country in the news anyway. like damn you gotta go 
what this really should say is priest to sex offender. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Sierra Simone, if that is your real name. Simone sounds fake, but like a... Sierra, you did a really good job with the first half of the book. But that seemed to be like the premise of what you were going for. And then I feel like halfway through... You're like, oh, you no, like, it's got to do what, something. What, yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know what to do with the rest of the book. Yeah. And then you just went fucking ape shit, And you were just like, oh, my God, this and then this. And then maybe we throw in some of that. And your editors were just like, sure. It's just sure. Just mm-hmm. knock yourself out as long as they keep fucking. <laughs> that's fine with us. Yeah. I, I mean, I sound. almost would have cut Sterling all the like him. I would just never would have had him appear. Just cut him out mm-hmm. of that second half entirely. Like you could have him in the background, like the background knowledge and stuff. Yeah, that's fine. But like, not not currently a problem. Like, just should have left all of that out, and then everything else should have played out the same. But I think that it it should have ended doing this. It should have ended whenever he showed up with flowers at the door and knocked on the door, and then fade to black. Nothing else. C would have made a decision. It was a full arc. Everybody was gonna, you know, make some choices. You don't actually know what happens, yes or no. Yeah. So you get to kind of maybe make you up have your an epilogue opinion. of them like hiking through the Tibetan mountains with their children on a mission trip or some shit. Yeah. 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 I maybe my son will be a priest. Oh my I was God. like, shut the fuck up, Tyler. I can't keep <laughs> doing this. Maybe you should have made this set back a little in time and then the sun is the second book and then he has the same thing happen and he has a son and that would be the third book Some... just leave the brothers out of it they're not priests dude is that what the other ones are about because this is a three book series technically right they're about his brothers okay but they're not priests there's no point <laughs> they weren't established Unless... enough in this book to Ooh. be something i care about reading well, hold on. I would absolutely read it if it was in reverse. So one of the brothers is gay and fucks a priest. I'd be so all over that shit. Mm, interesting. Miss Simone, if you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> can, you know, it doesn't even have to be good. You can just jot down some notes. Like, <laughs> this is all we got. Just pass. It. It's fine. Like, you don't even have to write the whole thing. God, could you imagine the fucking inner turmoil with that? Oh, that would be so good. That would be yeah, delicious. I need that. I don't know if any of us relate to this concept in general. I feel like this book is really good specifically if you have like, not in the same way that the book covers in like, because what I'm going to say is more like religious, like sex trauma, but I don't mean in the way that the actual abuse, like the book covers. I mean more in the way that you're shunned for your sexuality. So it's unrealistic for you to have a character that doesn't have that constant back and forth in their head because you've been told it's dirty or you've been told this is for marriage or you've been told X, Y, Z. So you have to have a relatable character with that same set of internal issues. Like I can see that being fun for you as a character or or as a person to read that kind of that kind. Fuck yeah, that'd be hot as fuck. I mean, it's where something. is that? <laughs> it's something. And you could definitely add that element with adding like two gay characters into it, because then it's even deeper if you are someone who grew up religious and also was gay. And then you had to, you know, maybe if you're not in a very accepting church or not a part of a very accepting religion, there's not a lot. Of oh, my God. Around. I need to reread this. But every single time it says Poppy, I need to change it to Paul. Not Paul. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen. Going to make some of those scenes a little difficult. No. <laughs> I changed it to something. No. Nope. But I would like not. that. I could see, though, if you were that type of person, if that, like, synopsis is of you as a person, then a book like this makes sense, you know? Tell I you what, this to change book... my opinion on certain books like that. Mm-hmm. This book makes me want to read a BDSM book. Yeah. Because I did not know that I I liked I liked the crawling on the floor thing that never happened. I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Yeah, and then this, it didn't. I was yeah. like, oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. This book makes me want to vacuum. Oh. It okay, does. Good. This book made me want to vacuum and like shampoo my carpet. Yeah, because them on the dirty church floor. <laughs> Growing up in the church, I can tell you, he never cleaned it. Ever. Yeah. They and he did talk about that too, it. right? <laughs> he did talk about the grimy 
carpet, the grungy carpet. <laughs> he made a yeah. comment about how gross it was. He's like, anyway, and I'm going to bang my never... wife here, who's not my He's wife. like, lay down on this nasty carpet that I definitely plan on taking That's out in the renovation. The mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, first of all, get on that no. nasty ass ground, you pig. Uh, you know what I and also did have that church might have asbestos in it. Well, it oh, you know what I know? I hope she's got her shots. Huh. Do you know what I also did not enjoy, though? He called her delicious so many fucking times. All right, so you know how Sarah J. Mass <laughs> has, has like Sarah J. Mass isms? Sure. Sierra isms is delicious. Sure. Everything's and fucking Reddit. delicious. Simone's? Yeah. Some, mm, okay, yeah. Interesting. interesting. I kind of I like that one. Simone's. Simone's. That's my vote. Delicious. So she's, every, yeah, everything sexual is delicious. Her body, his body, parts of her body, parts of his body, the thoughts of her body, the thoughts of his body, the thoughts of their bodies. Everything. It should have incorporated food. Delicious. <laughs> no time. And of course, this it just does all the classic tropes. The damn, I'm much bigger than more than most of these dudes. Even yeah. uh, I take pride in the fact I'm the biggest you've ever had. Ah ha ha ha. And like just the like, I'm this temptress, and I wear red lipstick. I'm like, oh my god. And of course, everything about her is perfect. Everything about her body is perfect. Mm. Her boobs are perfect. They're just big enough uh-huh. because they can't sag. But we have to know that as an audience because that would be the worst thing a woman could ever serve. Oh god, um, no. so she can't have that. But so they're but they're perky still. But they're small. Like, you know what I mean. And then the only one thing that she's allowed as a flaw is her teeth, like her two front teeth being slightly larger or whatever. I'm sick. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sorry. All I'm right. tired of reading about it's people who are possibly a- large. I don't need it. Give me fourth wing. I do not okay. fucking need. Here's that. what I'm going to do. Need perfect people. I'm going to write a book about a one eyed woman with a peg leg. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> They've got to be intense suicides, though. An intense overbite and a speech impediment. Listen. And then that person is going to be with a man <laughs> with an extra pinky toe mm-hmm. who has a micro penis mm-hmm. and is a pre ejaculate person. All right. Well, <laughs> that's going to be the book, and then we'll be like, you know what, Blue? He's this one's eczema. Too. Well, first of he's all, gotta he's got to have eczema everywhere. Listen, yes, I was like, just joking. <laughs> but like low key though, like I feel like it's like it's just like authors don't have this like in between where it's like, damn, can one of you guys like this guy's a priest, and they're like, oh well, his penance is that he always fucking works out. Of course it fucking is. Of course it is. Sure. Well, of course he has crazy abs and he's so strong and of course it would be so much hotter if like he actually went back to flogging himself like they did in yolden days that would have been way better i was kind of like ooh, i'm I'm ready for the things the smut was good though i mean i'll give you that like i mean the smut was very good yeah so sierra i need you to get with sarah j mass sarah you write the fantasy and simone (laughs) You write, Sierra, you write the the fucking. Just okay, and then go. you just collaborate. Uh, see, I work. like Sarah yeah, Smut. Just, just, like, just, tweak, just tweak it a little bit. I though. like Sarah Smut. I like it in like A Court of Silver Flames. Like I was into it. I was like, this is good. I think I mm. probably, of all the Smut we've read though, I probably like preferred more of the style of like Fourth Wing, to be honest. I don't remember it. They were like setting things on fire and like oh, destroying yeah. glass and like fucking. Fuck it. Uh, nice. nice. Sorry. That book. My favorite still got to be hands down half Haunting Adeline and half a Touch of Darkness. Oh. Off top of my head. Okay. Off top of my head, I've got Den of Vipers. The knife, man. I just really? can't. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Fair enough. I got to force us into reading like a marriage of convenience or something because I keep talking about how much I like it and we have yet to read any. But I have a couple. I'm of trying to get some different different shit yeah you're pulling out some interesting ones you know did purple tell you about how there's another unhinged it's called stuff okay uh-huh it's a pillow <laughs> with a with a down feather pillow but it's not the whole pillow it's a single feather <laughs> in the pillow <laughs> what? okay is it written by the same person I don't know. Is it if not, one of that's a missed opportunity. I don't know. One of our listeners told me about it, and uh, I was like, I have to add that to the TBR. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's mm. totally fine. 
No, here's the thing. No, no. No, it's we just do. funny. Because because Cuddle, you're like, I'm going to find something, Blue, that you're like, it's going to knock your socks off. You're like, you're so ready for this challenge. And then you're like, so anyway, so there's this pillow, okay? And <laughs> one feather. Cuddle. <laughs> what do you think I like? <laughs> You're like, I have a mission. Anyway, so I heard about this. Ice Planet Barbarians. <laughs> I mean, honestly, Ice Planet Barbarians, I feel like could actually maybe be good. I think. No, it's that other one. It's the other one. What's that one called? Which one? Cuddle? The, the, the Triceratops? One. The one where we don't even say its name. What about a mirror or something? A mirror. Twilight? A, ve- a veil. Twilight. <laughs> a veil or a mirror. Oh, a veil of truth and trickery. That one? <laughs> See, okay, I actually do want to read that for the podcast. So if any listeners are listening to this and you're like, oh my God, I read that. I want to read the book. Please cover it. Let me know. Because I am a hater for that book. I've talked about it on TikTok. I have been removed for bullying. <laughs> and I will do it again. <laughs> I, I will fucking it. do it again. True. Okay. True. You were. Yeah, they were like, you're fucking bullying. You and probably made forward. the author like really upset. <laughs> they, cried. they flagged it. Yeah. No. Oh, and I no. will make so many TikToks out of our podcast episode and I will be talking shit. I'll tag her. I don't care. I'll say it's your face. Okay? Yeah. Listen. Okay. Stop choosing violence. Calm down. <laughs> she got me fucked up. But we should read that one. You guys would probably like this month. I mean, this month's still fine. It's just objectively bad, but it's fine. It's fine. You mean like Twilight? No. Twilight is a cinematic masterpiece that will transcend mm. the ages and already has. Transcend the ages, right? Is that like next ages one through three, or <laughs> that's what you want? Damn it! <laughs> next, next pick, Midnight Sun. Let's do it. I will make you read it for my birthday, maybe. Like you know, if we get a pick every you know maybe year on our birthday, yes. maybe I'll pick a little Ooh. Twilight. And, you know. I'm feeling a little unfriendly around then. You guys don't <laughs> get it because you haven't read them. I don't need to read them you to know that I don't, don't like it. Get it. Okay, well, then that's me about the pillow. <laughs> Listen, you guys, you would like it. You would you would think it's better than what... You would have a different impression if you actually read it, I think. Oh, I'm sure. But... I do have we'll some, some YA stuff that I, I want to have coming up. Hell yeah. I loved that they used the various churchy things for their sexual purposes. The oil sure. and the clothy things and all okay, that jazz. The smells I got me out of it, though. I had to Google a couple of times. I had to look up every single thing. I was like, I don't know what that is. What is that? Yeah. And then I was like, oh, okay. It's exactly what I thought it was. And so then I had to, I just stopped looking them up. And I'm like, it's probably exactly what I think it is. And I was like, I love this. They're probably meaning it in a spiritual way, but I mean it in a defiling way. You know, it was so funny because my husband used to be Catholic. Mm. So I was like, Hey, what is this? And he's like, it's like a thing. And I'm like, no, but for real, like, what is it? And he's like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> but he's like, well, because that was a long time ago. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, I didn't have a lot of enough. like recollection of any of it either. But again, like Lutherans, like adjacent, but not like in the same way. So I was like, I don't know what the fuck any of this is, but it sounds good to me. Sounds good. I always loved the idea of confession I... and going into the little. Did you guys grow little... up in a Catholic church? No. No? We grew up next to a couple of different ones. I've never had confession. Look at something that are pretty. <laughs> Listen, it. it's a dark box where you're in by yourself mm-hmm. and you're telling somebody all the bad things that you did. <laughs> yeah. Come on. You are asking for a sex novel. Sure, sure. I could see that. I could see it. The only time I've ever really had that type of inkling, I guess, is with the show Fleabag because she literally fucks a priest in the show. So, I want to watch it so bad. Yeah, it's probably one of the best shows ever, to be honest. I watched it because I got I did that character quiz where it's like 5,000 plus characters across media and it's like, who are you the most like? And Fleabag is my number one. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oops. Oh, but that's well, a that means that I'll love so. her that much more yeah. than I already do. Because that is basically what my TikTok feed is dominated with is that show, especially now that I started talking about priests so much. (laughs) You're Googling priests. You're trying to find the book. They're like, ah, okay. (laughs) I know what you want to see. Hell yeah. (laughs) 
Yeah, I don't know. I guess the confession thing. I get, I get it being a setup for something like sexy in a novel, but I've. I just maybe. meant though, not sexy. Mm-hmm. Like obviously sexy, but like in a non-sexy way. Yeah. I kind of have always just loved the idea of going to confessional. Sure. Like I, I wished when I was young and going to church that that was a th- a thing that whatever church I had been going to did like it, that it wasn't just solely Catholic. Cause I always loved the idea of that. Sure. That kind of a thing going into the little room with like the, you know, little window that you can't see through and kind of spilling the beans. I don't know why, but I always thought that was cathartic. I feel like that sure. would be really cathartic. I could see it being ooh, almost like therapy in a way. Right. Yeah. Hey, here's all the Maybe bad things that's I why did. I like it. <laughs> and then they're like, "Well, just say a couple of prayers." Well, you know, that part I was always like, I don't get the fact. Like, I don't know. Again, Luther, the Lutheran in me, like as a child, mm-hmm. is like, just tell it to Jesus. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And then whip yourself. And that kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, that's a little different. <laughs> Wait, what was that movie? That was. Uh- where I the guy, no the idea. one guy did, it, no, it was in the, I'm, I'm being very serious. It was in a movie and it was the guy, you remember the, what was the night movie that Heath Ledger did? Remember the guy who got naked because he was the singer a guy? A Night's Tale. A Night's Tale. In A Night's Tale, there was an actor who they met on the road and he was butt ass oh. naked and he hired him uh-huh. and he also played the vision. That actor uh-huh. was a priest inside uh-huh. of a different movie. And that character whipped the shit out of himself every time he did something wrong. Mm-hmm. Very hot. Very different kind uh-huh. of movie. Sure. Love the concept, though. Very yeah. into that part. <laughs> but it was a thing. I'm going to look it up. Sure. <laughs> I love this tangent. <laughs> I do have to say, Blue, that this particular piece of uh, literature, mm-hmm. if you will, our priestly man did not just say say some prayers because he one of the very first things that happens is he where uh, here's a confessional of this teacher and he's like you know go ahead and actually like think about like what you want to do and like you know actually like go do some soul searching and stuff mm. and like he gave him like a real homework task and i was like all right i low-key love the fuck out of that Mm -hmm. and that is actually my biggest unanswered question is whatever happened to the teacher did he do the homework did he find whatever he was looking for he no longer cared about that kind of thing he quit being a a priest when Poppy (laughs) walked into that fucking church listen i don't give a flying fuck what he cared about i cared about that teacher i was in it (laughs) <laughs> did they improve themselves <laughs> i need to know yeah <laughs> i was sold on that plot point <laughs> where was it i found it so it's <laughs> the actor is paul bettany and he is in the movie the da vinci code mm-hmm. and i'm watching the clip now mm-hmm. is not is not hot no nope. well i will send it to you both thanks you share the love <laughs> So if I have to watch it, you have to watch it. Bear the self-loving. <laughs> I love our He is really. naked in it, but you don't you don't see anything interesting. Damn I mean, it. you do see his ass. But I feel like that's well, not that's abnormal for Paul Bettany. Okay. Weird thing to say about Paul Bettany. Well, but oh, we've like seen his ass in other film. They've seen his ass in. I mean, fair enough. You're watching the video, are you? Yep. <laughs> I love you both so much. Goofy. This is the most fun one I think we've ever had to, to record. All we have to do is get a little wine drunk and release all our religious and sexual history traumas <laughs> in, and just be silly. Yeah, could you imagine how funny it would be if we got wine drunk and Planet Barbarians or the, the Baryonic yeah, sex one? I'll buy more wine. I will make God. it happen. Yeah. My predictions for the rest of this series. I predict that Simone is going to come out with Dude on Dude 1 because I'm putting that out in the universe as a wish. 
<laughs> Dear God, okay, we're please. manifesting. Okay, I, I am. I am manifesting this. I need manifesting. Oh, mm. Manifesting. Mm. Manifesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All of it works. I like that. Fisting. No, never mind. Go, go, go. <laughs> I don't have any predictions because I know this is a one off. I know there's like a 1.5 in the series, mm-hmm. which kind of kicks off from the end of this book. But from what I understand, it doesn't really matter at all. It doesn't really add anything to the thing. And the other two are about the brothers. So. One is called Saint, one is called Sinner. So I'd imagine that one is bad boy turned good and one is good gr- good boy turned bad. He's a I had to take girl. a guess. Just a good girl. <laughs> good girl. Okay, queen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, can I be a I'm hater for a be second? here for that one too. <laughs> Always. <laughs> My prediction is that these two are so fucking obsessed with each other that they never do an act of good or kindness ever again. It's literally just about them and like getting through normal life and him going to school. But they never fucking go and like travel anywhere else again. Like he's not wow. going in another mission trip. Neither the fuck is she. They're not. They're just not. Wow. They're too obsessed with each other to do anything else besides each other. What they do is they start a strip club soup kitchen. Wow. The where priest she strips as you confess. Okay. To the stripper. Right. This is good. And she serves them soup. Oh God! Wow, what a good experience. We just sort of yeah. <laughs> this is an Some idea. Burning expectations. This is a concept. A business plan. Hello. <laughs> Goofy. So I think it's time just for put Bay it of the on Day. Kickstarter. Yeah. <laughs> Kickstarter. Bay of the Day. So Bay of the Day is going to be very non-controversial. It will be neither one of the two main characters. Because can I pick? Can I? Oh, I don't really I'm going to pick consistent. someone that I know you want. It is going to be the old lady. Fuck yeah. Millie. Damn it. It's Millie. Or the Owen. She's the only one who had her head on straight. She knew what was going on. Yeah. She only cared about, you know, getting the church and everything done right. She even said that it was a waste of his life to not be with the woman that was made for him. Gross. So Gross. I, I guess the real thing in the story that we all should pay attention to is there's there's a million everybody's lives listen to them and we'd have a lot less painful chapters hear me out i respect Mm. your answer i respect how you got to that conclusion as your head priest i am Mm. personally Mm. very offended and i'm gonna (laughs) need a couple hail marys out of that one what do you mean if there's one hot priest in the room right now it's our head (laughs) priest bukama well, hold okay, on, okay, 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 okay. Head, head priest. I would <laughs> like to, uh, I would like to confess some things to you. Maybe we should go to the uh, confessional booth. First of all, <laughs> I will I'll do my... bring the whips. I will bring all that's <laughs> necessary and reasonable. Okay. All right. I'll bring, bring the, the holy tissues. oils. Yeah, the holy oil. There's no safe word. You just pray to God and Snacks. nobody hears you. <laughs> that's all you got. <laughs> that seems problematic. Nah, but in a hot way. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh my god. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Goofies. Well, with that being our bay, I mean, we love Millie in this house. Indeed. This she, one too. She really was better at technology than him. He could have been spending all that time on <laughs> anywhere but Reddit, but that's fine. You know, that's he was just too busy listening that. to Britney Spears. Yeah. What a relatable man. Wow, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so fun. I'm such a fucking hater, dude. I'm sorry. I kind of want to be Millie when I'm old, though. No, to okay, be clear, sure. to be clear, Sierra Simone, none of the three of us hated your book. We just hated no. the ending. Well, yes. nope, and that's the it. fact and that the computers are never cleaned. I might give it a one and a half. You five. stop it! I'm being nice. You would rate. I'm being Nuh-uh. nice with that number. It, you need it takes the a lot. A three. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> no, I fucking did not. Well, you're good reads right now. <laughs> it's not a three. I'll tell you that much. If it was a three, I was stoned when I put in the rating and I fucked it up somehow. <laughs> There's no fucking way. Going no right now, your good reads. I'm going right now. I don't even know if I put it on there, to be honest. Or did you rate this shit? I don't think I even put it on there. Or if Blue's books, please hold. <laughs> <laughs> no, take your time. By all means. <laughs> <laughs> Which two? 
<laughs> Catcher in the Rye. Hold on. Mm-hmm. The Giver. You created The Giver of Three. Wow, The Giver is such a shitty book. It has moments. No. It could the, have been a the, lot better. The best part was the snow. Rated Assassin's Blade of One. You're so, saying that this is about the same as Assassin's Blade? This one had fucking. That gives it <laughs> so a half a point. And a half? <laughs> Step up. That gives it like a small amount of points, yeah. You rated Den of Vipers four fucking stars. No, I didn't. Are you yes, on my account? Fuck you did. No, I, I am didn't. on your account. Yes, you did. <laughs> I literally would Look never at this do that. Shit. And if I did, Look I love at this these shit. people so much. Don't ever leave me. Den, I did not put a fucking. F- that's your rating. No, that's your no, rating. It's not. I am on my rating. Blue's my book. rating. Look, it says my rating right there. I didn't even fucking write it. You're lying, bro. You're gaslighting me in real time. You gave oh. them a one for Possessor's <laughs> Blade. You fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you really said wow you gave two stars and that is legitimate and you yeah think- oh yeah well truth and trickery though i hate for specific reasons I love this one is non-specific Ooh. yeah you rated den of vipers four stars listen <laughs> <laughs> i have never been so offended in my life oh i knew i didn't fucking rate that shit for i fucking knew it <laughs> You're like, wow, oh, Assassin's God. Blade a one, huh? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, well, before I let my sisters and sins slander my name <laughs> any longer. <laughs> oh, you're keeping that in there? That's hilarious. Are you kidding? <laughs> it's literally so <laughs> funny. But before, I, uh, you know, I'm slandered anymore in this holy house. Well, go ahead and read us out. We want to thank you guys for listening. This has been Smutty Scriptures reading Priest by Sierra Simone. We've read the entire book. Next episode, we should be diving into Credence, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm ready. I'm ready for some snow and some ah, not. Fuck uncle. yes. Snow. <laughs> I'm ready. Of course, I know we snow mentioned this earlier in the Christmas. podcast, but we have the Smutty Scriptures Goodreads. We got an Instagram for Smutty Scriptures. We got a TikTok. We post a bunch of silly mm-hmm. stuff all the time. So by all means, Go ahead and check out those platforms. And also you can check out designs for both all of the books that we've been reading. These two make some really wonderful designs on Etsy that you can access through like Smutty Scriptures Instagram page, for example. And they have been making tons of awesome stuff, book club kits, all this fun stuff. And even Smutty Scriptures merch, dude. I have a Smutty Scriptures jacket. We could match all of my subjects. You are legally required to order the jacket. I don't make the rules. Okay, that's the rules. But yeah, so then we wanted to thank you guys for joining us. But with that, church is adjourned. Thank you, Daddy God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs>